Today on our 2014 Ram 2500, we're going to be installing the Fastway E2 weight distribution system, part number FA94-00-1033. To assist with this installation, we're also going to be using the Equalizer weight distribution shank, part number EQ90-02-4900, and a 2 and 5 16 inch hitch ball for the equalizer weight distribution system, part number EQ91-00-6120. So as you can see before, when making turns, the trailer didn't want to follow closely behind the vehicle, causing some angles that you really had to look out for in your mirror. And now it more closely follows behind me, making it a smoother, easier turn. So as you can see here, while driving along, turning and going over bumps, without our weight distribution system, the trailer really likes to sway. But now that we've got it installed, you can see the friction material really holding it in place and minimizing that sway. Now you've got your truck and you've loaded up your trailer and you take off and you notice it doesn't feel quite right. Well when you've got all that weight on the back, it lowers down your rear end and it lifts up on your front end, inhibiting your steering and braking performance. Also when it lifts up on your front, your headlights are aimed high, so when you're driving at night you can't see quite as well as you used to. Another issue is that when you're taking tight turns, your trailer doesn't want to quite follow behind you correctly. But with our weight distribution system from Fastway, it's going to reposition that trailer weight equally over your rear and front axles, restoring your factory performance. Instead of having a single connection between your trailer and truck, the ball mount, tension arms, and brackets evenly support the weight of your trailer across its components and transfers that to your truck. Another issue you can run into with your trailer, you make an evasive maneuver, swerve around a pothole, your trailer can then sway behind you. This Fastway system is going to help correct that issue as well, reducing that amount of sway. The L-brackets have a friction material on top, so when your trailer starts to sway, it's going to provide that contact with your spring arm to help correct that sway more quickly. One of the best parts of this weight distribution system is how easy it is to install, as well as take off when you don't have your trailer hooked up and you're not using it. When you're done hauling your trailer, after you've lowered down your jack and disconnected your coupler, all you do is pull this pin here, and your arms will drop out and you can store them for whenever you're ready to use it again. What else is great about this system is there's no unwanted play, like in a chain style system. This has the friction material here that keeps it nice and sturdy and also gives us that anti-sway. And unlike other systems that have a separate sway control arm, you don't have to worry about anything when you're backing up. Those other systems can cause problems while backing up and turning. So you don't have to worry about anything like that with this system. And if you don't want to modify the frame of your trailer, this system's great because there's no drilling required. It just clamps right on and all the hardware you need to get it installed comes included. Let's show you how to do that now. To start our installation, we're going to need to get some measurements, both with the vehicle loaded and unloaded. Currently we have our trailer hooked up, so it's in the loaded state. We're going to start at the driver's side rear tire and measure from the ground to the lower portion of the fender well. And right now we're measuring about 41 and a quarter inches. So we're going to jot that down and then take another measurement on our front wheel. Here we are at our driver's front wheel, taking a measurement from the ground to the fender well, and it's going to be about 40 and a half inches. Now that we've got both of our loaded measurements, we're going to unload the vehicle by disconnecting our trailer and record those measurements. And it measures about 42 and a half inches. We'll now go to the front and record that measurement. And here at the front, we're measuring 40 and a quarter inches. So the difference is between our loaded and unloaded vehicle, while loaded, it's going to drop the rear end by one and a quarter inches and raise our front end by a quarter inch. So when we install our weight distribution system, we're going to adjust it to compensate for that to bring it closer to our unloaded measurements. The next step is to level out our trailer. That way we can adjust our ball mount height properly. We've got a level up on the side of our trailer over there and we're just gonna lower it down until it's level. Once the trailer is level, take a measurement from the ground to the top of your coupler so we know how high to adjust our ball mount. Looks like ours is about 21 and a quarter inches. We can then remove our old ball mount, install our drop, and prepare our weight distribution ball to be installed. You'll need to take the adjustment pin and you'll place washers on it. You can use between zero and seven washers, and this will adjust how much weight distribution you can apply. More washers means more weight distribution. 
Based on our measurements, we're gonna start out with about four washers and adjust from there. If you had further dropped than we did on your vehicle with your trailer installed, then you may need more washers to apply more weight distribution. We'll take those and slide it into the hole at the back top portion of the hitch here. Slide the large conical tooth washers on your large bolts. Face the teeth away from the head of the bolt. Raise your ball mount up into position, and we wanna try and get it about even with your trailer. So the measurement we took before is about what we're aiming for. We're gonna start in this position, take a measurement and try it out. Slide it through one of your opening holes. And then we'll take a quick measurement just to see where we're at. You'll wanna press it up against the spacer that we had placed in before, so that way you get a good measurement. And we're at about 22 and a quarter, so we're a little bit higher here, but we're also at our lowest adjustment. So we're gonna go with this position for now. Once you found an appropriate position, take your other bolt with conical tooth washer and slide it in the opposite direction in the other hole. Take your other two conical tooth washers and put them in with the teeth facing towards the ball mount. Then thread on the nylock nuts. Tighten down your adjustment bolt until your spacer comes into contact with your drop shank. And just make it so it's snug. Next, tighten down your ball mount bolts. You'll do this with a 1 and 8 inch socket and a 1 and 16 inch socket. and then torque your bolts to the specification in your instructions. Do that for both bolts. Now we're going to install the sway bar L-bracket mounts onto our trailer. These clamps will go around the frame on your trailer and we'll install those by sliding a bolt through the bracket with two studs on it, through the other bracket, and then threading a nut on the other side. We'll then slide these down over our trailer and we'll need to make our appropriate measurement for the correct mounting location. Before we set the correct positioning and tighten it down, we want to make sure there's no wiring or hosing in the way. Make sure it's on the outside of the clamp so nothing squeezed between the clamp and the frame. We'll now position the clamps per the measurement in the instructions. It wants it to be at 27 inches, so you have to check to make sure that you have clearance on your frame there, which we do. Now if you don't have clearance there, Let's say your tanks were in the way. You can position it as far forward as 24 inches. Since ours works at 27, we're gonna place it there. And then again, slide your bolt through the outside, then the inside bracket, and position your nut on the other side. You can now tighten those nuts down. If it's in the appropriate position, we'll torque it to the specifications and in our instructions. You want to alternate back and forth when tightening down your hardware. So as not to tighten one side further than the other. And then repeat this same process on the other side, making sure that your measurements for the brackets are the same. Place on your L adjustment bracket with the angle facing out. Which hole you have it on will adjust how much tension you're going to get from your weight distribution system. Having it all the way down will be your lowest. Having it all the way up will give you the most. For our setup here, we're gonna start with the lowest adjustment and then go from there. Take the thin nylock nuts included and thread those on the end. And then tighten them down using a three quarter inch socket. And then repeat the same process on the other side. We're now ready to back up our vehicle and reconnect our trailer so we can install the adjustment arms. Before we install our tension arms, you wanna take a little bit of wheel bearing grease and put it up inside the hole. As this arm's gonna pivot around, this will prevent any wear and allow it to rotate freely. It also make it easier when inserting and removing it for storage. Simply slide your tension arm up into the hole and it will click into place. Then do that with the other bar. Now you want to check to see if you can put it on. It's good that while the vehicle is loaded with the trailer that you cannot put it on. That indicates that you're not adjusted too loosely. 
In order to put it on, you'll want to then lift up the vehicle and trailer while it's still connected using your jack. Our vehicle and trailer are now lifted up by our jack and we still can't get it installed all the way. The included tool will hook underneath the arm and then inside the square slot and can be used to pry it into place. Take the L hold down pin with the hole downward and slide it into the square slot. Then use the cotter pin provided to hold it into place. You'll do the same thing on the other side. We've got our system fully installed here, so now it's time to recheck our measurements at our front and rear tire and compare them to our unloaded measurements. Here we are again at our driver's rear tire and we're measuring 41 and 3 quarter inches. Our previous loaded measurement was 41 and a quarter inch, so we've lifted up our rear end by a half an inch. And now we're at our driver's front tire and we're measuring 40 and 1 eighth inches. Our previous loaded measurement was 40 and a half inches. So we've lowered it down the front by 3 eighths of an inch. Our unloaded measurement was 40 and a quarter inch, so we're even eighth of an inch lower there. So as you can see, our weight has been distributed evenly across our vehicle. Then you wanna come back and check the level on your trailer. If everything's level, then you're good to go. If it's still positioned up too high or too low, you may need to reposition your ball mount slightly higher or lower on your drop. Now that everything's properly adjusted, go back and make sure that all of your hardware is tightened and torqued to the specifications in your instructions. With the system set and adjusted properly, we're ready to load up our trailer and hit the road. And that completes our installation of the Fastway E2 weight distribution system on our 2014 Ram 2500.